What's up everybody, my name is Ron Empire and welcome to my channel. Alright, good morning everybody. It is November 14th, Tuesday, 6.41 a.m. And uh, today I want to check out the two new tutorial missions that they actually added to the game. They recently added the tutorials and tips update last week on Thursday. And I didn't actually get a chance to check out the new content that they added. So today I want to take a look at that before starting any new seal cycle runs. All right, so yeah, it says in this update, we bring you two new optional tutorial missions explaining trading, hostility, rain punk, and light rot. And then they uh, introduced numerous UX improvements, balance changes, new loading tips, and new custom icons. Yeah, we already went through all the, most of this stuff here. So this section right here is the one that I want to check out. Since they spent some time working on it, I do want to give them um, the new tutorials a, a uh, look. All right, so... To access the new tutorials, it's this left-hand panel here. And this here is the, the first mission we've already done. This is the second mission we've already done. These are the standard tutorial missions that you get when you're a new player. And then these tutorial missions don't actually get unlocked until you unlock trading um, in the uh, Citadel upgrade. And then this also doesn't unlock until you get the rain punk, uh, the rain engine stuff. So here we have not, as you can see, we've not done these. So I definitely want to do them. Now, the thing that uh, I want to point out, if you end up skipping the tutorial, for for instance, you can, they, they don't have it available here anymore. It used to be there's a button here that says replay tutorial missions. So all that, that button there got removed and now it's consolidated over here instead. And you can actually do them individually as well. Before you had, when you did do the uh, replay mission or tutorial mission, it forced you to go through the first and then you have to hit escape and then it forces you to go to the second. Um, I think now if you just hit escape, it might just go through, it might exit all of them. I'm not quite sure. But anyways, we want to check out this, and then we also want to check out this. So let's go ahead and do that now. You're about to begin the tutorial scenario, hostility, and trade. You can leave the tutorial and return to the world map at any time. All right, let's do that. This is probably not a prestige miss mission. It's probably whatever settlers mode i don't know all right so press any key to start okay as your town grows the force around you become more and more hostile each hostility level lowers the resolve of your villagers and makes the storm harsher okay One of your main responsibilities is to maintain hostility as you develop your settlement. Okay. So yeah, if you guys notice, this here is the hostility panel. You actually get this panel when you roll over the, uh, the little eye icon right here, the red eye. And that's usually how you get the, um, the panel to show up. This panel is like a pop-up on rollover only. Um, back in the days, they used to have this years without the parentheses these numbers here represents the uh the hostility cost for years and back in the days these red zeros used to be green zeros i actually threw in my suggestion and complained about it, saying look these green zeros is not very representative of this being a negative effect People need to understand that years is actually a negative effect. Having a zero green 
and it will never be positive. So why have it ever show green? Because green is a positive um, bonus. This is actually in your favor. So they took in my suggestion eventually, and I actually bugged them about because they wouldn't really wanted to release that for some reason. I don't know why. And they're like, yeah, you're right. And let's. So they did that as a fix right before an update. And I, I'm just going through this to tell you the story behind that. I did push for this in the background uh, w through DMs with them. And then this also was something I had pushed for as well uh, in, in terms of showing you the value. So yes, you can thank me for, for getting this nice UI here. Um, all right, so let's keep going. Each region has a unique set of seasonal effects called Force Mysteries. Okay, these are things at the top are Force Mysteries. The positive ones are active during Drizzle and the negative ones during the Storm. So this is a positive one. The higher the hostility level, the more negative effects the Storm will bring. Establish a trade hub in this region and keep the forest at bay. I think what they should have done was sort of in that little tutorial thing is to tell you um, to roll these over and walk you through what these things mean. So I'm going to walk you through what these things mean if you're watching this video and trying to learn um, uh, what that little bit of the tutorial was. Okay, so this here is a force mystery. This here is a force mystery. Now the positive ones are highlighted with a green border and the negative ones are, are highlighted with a red border. The red ones are only active in the storm season as if you see it, it you roll over it, it'll actually say it. Only active in storm season. And this says only active in drizzle. So in the drizzle season, at the bottom below that, it says active from hostility level zero, right? So whatever it's, so if your hostility is zero, um, it will show up as as a, as a value here or a benefit, right? And then when the storm season kicks in at a hostility level zero, so I, this will pretty much always be in effect to you, right? Um, and you're always going to get like a negative global resolve to all your species. And this is only at zero. So, which is almost at all the time, right? So I, I don't know what, here's the thing, when this is active at zero, like a lot of times you can actually go below zero, but I don't know if that, if that um, changes these things or not. I'll ask the developers because I have managed to get below zero. Um, Hailstorm is here, it says active from hostility level two. So this number right here, the zero needs to be two or this to, to actually take effect. And then these, mysteries will have some sort of uh, special conditions to prevent it. So down below it says to prevent this, right? You can actually um, prevent it by having housing for everybody. And that little bar at the bottom indicates basically um, if you've managed to fulfill everybody. So if you look at this, it says zero slash nine affected. So right now it's hidden from us because this is the tutorial, but most likely there are only nine villagers in this um, in this little tutorial map. So when it says zero out of nine affected, um, that means that, you know, that fading effect will actually um, occur. So, okay, so let's say if you have housing for everybody, then the, the affected value would be zero. Right now it's zero because, you know, we're in the tutorial and the, the um, storm hasn't kicked in yet. But later, once the game starts, if you don't have housing, right, the, the affected is the number of people that will will get the fading effect. Uh, okay, so the force will claim its villager's life during the storm multiplied by the number of years that have passed. So this one right here is hostility level seven. So this actually, this number zero has to reach seven for this effect to kick in. So when effect does not kick in, it's actually usually at the top of your screen. And the ones that are active will be shifted down a little bit down here. So right now, since we're at zero, this will be the only thing that will be affected. Um, and it will only occur during the storm. 
So since we're at zero, two, and seven, this is pushed all the way up uh, to, to the top of the screen. So that's why you don't actually uh, need to worry about this for now. All right, so here it says establish a trade route in this region and keep the force at bay. Okay, sure. Hey, good morning, Cart449. How's it going? Doing another account reset? Yeah, I'm not to... Maybe. We'll see. I will plan on doing a account reset at some point. This is not an account reset. This is just going through the tutorial missions that they added recently to the game. Uh, if I do do a, an account reset, um, it, it will be on a, a separate VOD playthrough for, from this. All right, so this is not a uh, an account reset tutorial. It's actually a tutorial. The, the two new tutorial missions that they added in the last update, but it can only be unlocked uh, based on your Citadel upgrade. And the one I'm currently going through is talking about the hostility and trading aspect of the game. All right, so those were the, the brief intros on the tutorial, and I just did a little walkthrough on the things that they talked about they could have gone in a little bit more in depth about like how these things are pointed out specifically how they're active and how the ui indicates like whether these are going to show up or not so right now we can expect this and this during the storm all right so and i as i mentioned right see how this says housing and it's zero affected right now um we have nine people total that's where that nine's coming from all right, so let's go ahead and click on this. All right, so interestingly, they, um, they're they giving us two choices. <laughs> so this is this is interesting, right? Um, so what do we want here? We'll take the smokehouse and we'll take the herb garden. And we'll take the brickyard and this here they only gave us one choice which is kind of misleading how the tutorial plays out right they said hey we're only going to give you one choice so that is kind of a little misleading what they could have done was i think for this tutorial they should have at least given us um the blueprint maybe like the provisioner or a manufactory because if this tutorial is about trading they really should give us some sort of blueprint building that that says, "Hey, you know, you did you know you can also build the, you know, the tutorial or the provisions through that, right? If you don't choose it, you kind of miss out, right?" Um. All right. Well, that's fine. I'm gonna go do what I do normally. And this is this is like, like you know the third tutorial, a little bit more advanced. So new players shouldn't be playing with with this right out of the gate until they upgrade the citadel to show that they've got trading available. Hopefully that's just not the whole entire thing, right? Because I feel like the tutorial could use more work if it's. If it doesn't tell players more information. Okay, so the rain collector is available in this, this tutorial. It's, it's really interesting that they only gave you the brickyard as the as the uh, the choice. That would have not have been something I'd choose unless it's purely random. I could always try to do this tutorial again later, but I don't see why it would be random if it was custom made. Yeah, see here we don't even get to pick, right? They just basically forced us to get this. Okay. So we'll get that going there. What's our starting resources? Do they give anything special? No, right. Interesting. Alright. They gave us at least a shelter. Um, well, yes, shelter homes are basic, right? Did we get a kitchen? No, we didn't get a kitchen. Interesting. All right. Well, I guess the kitchen wouldn't be unlocked, right? Right after you unlock the trading. Or they're assuming that 
that most players will unlock the trade post first before the kitchen. Okay. Fiber per minute sounds like a good deal. Settlement specializes in wine production. Gain plus one. Okay, so this looks like it is from my Citadel upgrade. Because normally you don't actually get the rerolls. You have to like upgrade the Citadel to get the rerolls. Alright, I'm gonna take this one. This is decent. This is kind of crappy. This is kind of like, ugh. We'd have to find Sea Meryl for that. Alright, what's our starting resources? Three, two, and one. So, okay, this is kind of weird, right? It's not very representative of the game. And this is another comment or feedback I'd probably want to give to the developers. You, you don't ever, ever, ever get a large Flaxfield two-star in a starting glade. So why would you ever do a tutorial mission that has this here? Right? That's just not... By now, most players should already know how to play the game. They've already experienced most of the maps to even get to this point um, in the tutorial. So I don't see a reason why they should just offer only specifically just the uh, the brickyard and then have a giant flax field in the middle of the, the glade. This is not representative of how the game works. So I, I think that when they do tutorials, they need to make the game a little bit more representative of how the game actually is because players have already at this point experienced playing whatever missions uh, maps this is my feedback as I'm playing these tutorial missions okay all right so here We've got all housing, right? So that housing here is all done. And we're still zero out of nine affected, uh, which is good. So once we kick into the storm level two later, that should never show as affected. We're showing anyone being affected. I've made a lot of mistakes in the past where I forget to, to have everyone um, fully housed. At the top of the left screen here, there's like a homeless button here. And sometimes I forget. And so when you have homeless people, that means during the storm season, that affected will actually start kicking in. Now that affected also is, is based on their uh, break intervals. So sometimes you will see zero affected, but, and then if you end up destroying homes, for example, because you need the wood during the storm for whatever reason, I've done that in the past, or you need bricks or or planks, that does not immediately get a f a, uh, updated right away when you do that. It only gets updated on their next uh, break intervals. Each of the villagers have a break interval time. So then they go so they got to go through to do their break and then then they get their next break interval and that's when the the effect starts kicking in and we have meat right all right so they don't have consumption controls here during this tutorial oh huh, interesting and i have unlocked it But I guess that's fine if they want a consistent um, experience for everybody. Uh, so I need to get this, right? I need to get this too. Oh, I probably need to get fiber, right? Do they give me pipes? Oh, I didn't get any pipes on this tutorial mission. Okay. 
Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Well, I can install it, but I don't have a way to make them. Or a, 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 or I don't have any pipes as a starting. I can't remember if you do you get pipe when you when you unlock engines. I think you do, right? I think you get pipes automatically as you're starting. You're starting. I have to watch one of my re uh, bods see. All right, what what's the reward for this? People and okay. People and more. Um, more stuff, right? All right. What are the negative effects? There's no negative effects. Because I was gonna see what is in this panel here, and I I feel like the tutorial mission needs to be consistent with the rest of the game. Because when you hit escape. It should say, like, hey, this is Royal Woodlands. These are the little thingies. These are the thingies that you can get. These are the negative effects and positive effects. And usually they have that in the regular runs. But yeah, I just want to, you know, do the tutorial here to give them feedback on how the tutorial could actually be improved. Or being close in line with what actually people experience. What's the rate of growth? 0 0.08, huh? This may actually be tied to your Citadel upgrade, like the, the re-rolls. Yeah, and, and this is a multiplier of one, right? So that means we must be playing on Settler's difficulty. Which means they should if, well, it's not entirely true because the blueprints seem to be all fixed. So I don't know what What's going on with that? Game okay, plus one resolve every time you sell goods. Okay, Farsight, Camp, okay, reroll. Ooh, Ancient Pack, I'll take it. <laughs> on a tutorial mission. That's cool. I forgot to build my trade post. Well, it's kind of a mistake there on my part. Usually I like to build my trade post early. But I don't think this matters in this situation because the storm didn't last very long. So even if I did build it, I don't think the trader is going to show up right away. I think the trader would show up like somewhere around here or here. Oh, he did show up. Okay, that's fine. Okay, this is supposed to be like what? Hostility and trading mission, right? Well, these are kind of nice, right? The question is, do I kill this guy during the tutorial mission? Will that screw up the tutorial? Exactly. If this is a tutorial for trading missions, right? Why didn't they even tell me build a trade post and tell me about it, right? I agree with that assessment too, Aquin. It's kind of weird, right? You're doing a tutorial and hostility tutorial, but where is the the part of talking about the trading mission? 
All right. I feel like this tutorial mission is kind of lacking some things, right? It needs to be a little bit more polished. And if this is a tutorial mission about trading, well, like, why is it not giving me the trade post? Or sorry, the, the, the trade routes, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I could win without building one, but my uh, my other point, too, is uh, this is about... Maybe it wants me to advance. Oh, you know what it is? I think I understand why. At the beginning of the game. They, uh, they want you to get an herbalist. They, or they were offering you an herbalist camp in the herb garden, right? Or why... Okay, so I think I understand why they, they are wanting you to harvest the berries because you're going to need to make provisions and berries is one of the things that's needed for trading and that's probably why they want you to produce this instead of deliver Hello. I don't know if this is a good idea <laughs> um Hang on, let's take a look at the ancient pack stuff, though. Taking step by step instead of giving you the end goal, right? It's probably supposed to take. It's probably taking it step by step. I mean, we should assume that players who don't know how to trade would want to do the tutorials. But this is optional, though, so it's not like it's forcing them to do it. Jesus Christ, merchant shipwreck in that one. Leaking cauldron. Tome denial. There's a clan hall in there. We, we're gonna want soil, though, right? To go in there to start utilizing our herb garden. Okay, alright, I know what the thing is. Okay. We're gonna take the one on the right, because the merchant shipwreck uses two tools to solve. It's an interesting choice to have the merchant shipwreck right there. And yeah, all right, that's fine. Let's go this way. I mean, I could go here, right? The hostility is not that big of a deal either. You know what's fine, let's go ahead and here. There's no cost going in there anyways. I, I, I don't know if I, I can't do consumption controls. So. Jeez, I should have sold that right away. I'll take it. Legendary. Yeah, you could probably win the game without even going through the rest of the tutorial. So this also is not representative of how the actual game works. Normally they give you choices. So now they want you to do the trade post and sell three goods. So this is also kind of weird because the the three that I just sold immediately counted towards this and normally it, it's not retroactive so this is another little inconsistency in the game because it's like hey you know sell three amber's worth I I did that before I even got this so it's kind of a little odd that that happened there All right, so let's go ahead and sell the remaining amount, right? Or hang on. It needs value of seven. So here's the other thing that they want to, they need to explain to people that sell values of goods 
right they, they need to say hey you know on the screen when you're looking at the trader the value of the goods they need to talk about what is that first number and what does that second number mean right if you're a new player you're like okay well what does that first number mean what's that second number mean All right the first number okay so i will tell you what it means right the the value of the first number is what you're going to get for it right 239 and the second value is basically how much you have of that stack so an example of the amber if you go like this that amber is worth one and the second number is how many you can get from the stack itself so the tutorial at least should talk about that and then they should also mention that hey you know certain conditions could lower these values so they want me to sell seven, right? Um, sure. And then they should also mention that on the left hand side, you know, you don't always get like the, the full value because most players will not already have the entire trade line, the Citadel upgrade line on the left. Uh, fully upgraded so they, they should at least mention that the amber that the trader has is um is higher 625 14 yeah it's fine i'm not gonna get a better deal or anything less than that <laughs> all right and then they want me to collect rainwater, which is fine. That's produce, not deliver. And I guess I produced only 24 last game. Okay. I turned in two things. So I only get one choice from here on out. It's very odd, right? That's fine. It's a tutorial, right? So I'm okay with that. I usually don't stick my thing right here either. I'm gonna redo it because I don't like where I placed it. All the tutorials, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tutorials were like that. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. I mean, it's just not representative of the game itself. As I mentioned in the beginning of the game, that the game never starts you off with a giant node in the middle of the the glade so this is not normal oh what's interesting is that my radius is one two three four right it actually counts my upgrade my citadel upgrade Now we have Drizzle. Let's go ahead and move on. Plus two gain. Nice. Sure. Okay. Bricks, right. Uh, we don't have any bricks. Stop. Or maybe we do. I don't know. Did the guy give us any? Oh, we do have some. I want to remove or redo this. I want to move this over here. Move this back. Move this over here. Oops. Want to move this here. And then. I need to get the stones, right? Okay, all right, that should be fine. So missing stones. Oh, actually, never mind. I do have 
bricks. I can go to that. They got me nothing. And I need to get housing. Oh, I always forget to do the housing. Hey, Tello Grandmaster, welcome back. Counts your upgrade, but not the fuel kitchen. I know, all right? It's kind of weird, right? Certain things count, certain things don't count. Because that, that this definitely is the entire range. One, two, three, four, right? Yeah. And I did unlock trading, but it's not available at the top. So I don't know what part of this tutorial mission teaches you trading. Because if, if I'm a new player and I just unlock trading and I now have this mission as as a tutorial mission available to me to do, it's not showing me the trading stuff. It's not teaching me anything about trading, so I don't I don't I'm still kind of baffled by this. Like where what in this tutorial mission is actually teaching me about tutorial uh, trading? I mean, the only thing it did was it walked through me the hostility. Maybe there's a second part to this. I don't know. Like, this is the first time me playing this. I'm trying to, you know, play through this so I can give proper feedback on how this can be improved before the release. Well, here's the thing. I actually also have a brickyard. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have. He, he must have procced, right? Because I do have a brickyard. And I probably should have done that. I probably could have gotten more bricks off of that. That was my mistake. And maybe I should start also working on... getting this ready for trades. I'm assuming I'm gonna need it, so I don't know. I can't pipe anything because I don't have any pipes. How did I get tablets? Oh yeah, wow, they gave me tablets? What mission gives you tablets? That's crazy. They gave me tablets as a reward. Do you get that as settlers? I don't know. Hmm. Interesting, huh? It's just always interesting what they give us. Maybe this tutorial has is connected to Lori too. I don't know. What else did I get that I haven't built yet? I got everything right. they gave us pottery so that means we could make pickle goods that's probably why they gave us a uh, a brickyard so we can do some pottery thinking here all right so had I not gotten the the herb garden how would they have expected me to get the porridge producing right remember how I oh maybe I guess through the mushrooms that's on the ground okay well 
I would have I wouldn't have known to go in here though, unless mushrooms in every single patch. Right. I think if I were to do this mission, it, right? I mean, if these are all fixed, and the porridge producing building, which is a distillery, we were forced to give to take it, right? But how would we have known or been able to complete that if I didn't know to go here? Or if I had not taken the herb garden as a choice and I took the berry, the herbalist instead? And what's weird is that if I had taken the herbalist, I guess this is the only one that would have benefited from the herbalist. Oh, this one over here, too. Never mind. That one would have benefited from the herbalist. Okay, okay. And that would make sense to be able to produce the um, porridge. Lemonade. I'm gonna sell this. So I don't have to make it. Bed and breakfast. Let's re roll this. Ooh, a delivery line, huh? I'll take it. Hey, man, raving man. What's going on? I think that's it, right? Alright, so let's see here. What else can I do here? And I need humans on that. All right, so I need 30 pickle goods. Are you selling pipes? No, right, you're not selling pipes. Yeah. All right, you can leave. Do I have any more humans? Yeah, there's no consumption controls on this map, right? Let me get this back up and running again. Oh, hey, the berries is plus three on this map. Oh, I forgot. I should have just. I should have waited or turned it off if I wanted to maximize the berries. I forgot the force mystery here is plus three berries. So generally when you get this, you want to turn this off outside of the drizzle season if you want to maximize your, your little nodes. Oh, of course, I, I know, I'm not gonna struggle beating it, but I'm just pointing out that if you're playing this, right, and you're having a hard time playing the game, or when you actually do play this for real, and you actually happen to have this mystery, right, you're gonna want to, to conserve your nodes as a suggestion if you're watching this video and you're thinking about it, right? So here, as an example, you don't want this enabled. Because when you harvest this, you're only going to get one. And you're not taking advantage of this anymore. See how this mystery disappears? And I didn't cover every every 12. So here's an example, right? Here's a perfect example of why I always build a second farm. A lot of players ask me, like, oh, why do you why do you have a second farm? Do you need a second farm? 
we'll see how like this 11 out of 12 kicked in and she obviously did not harvest anything right so that that charge 12 slash 12 was never maxed out so to get that fully maxed out for next time you need to use this extra slot here and then throw down a human preferably a human right to do this because planting the 10 percent chance of doubling the yield is applied only during the planting season which is drizzle so now in this situation i missed out on that one extra farm field that over here that never got planted so if you had a third worker that third worker will be able to cover that ax that last spot i mean you don't have to fill it in right away at the beginning of the the drizzle i mean she could have done it like towards the tail end but if you actually do put in three workers at the start of the drizzle they may finish their work really fast and then you can actually take them off the uh, farm if you enable the um, option or for right here, idle farmers indicator. So if you enable that and you actually have all three workers, uh, whoa, they rotated them out. So if you have all three workers in here and they fill this out really quickly, you might get idle farmers at the, you know, quarter marker of the uh, drizzle, then take them all out and get them to do something else instead, right? I like that it tells you how long it takes them to plant harvest now. Yes, it is a very nice uh, indicator now. So you can actually calculate how many, right? You can just calculate. But keep in mind that this calculation does not factor in the break intervals, right? And the break time. And it doesn't factor in... Uh, the distance to the warehouse because if your warehouse is really over here and then they they have to bring the the harvest back to the warehouse then you need to consider that and figure out how to add more workers appropriately because these numbers don't don't fully give you the whole picture and then secondly uh this storage capacity right now is 30 because i probably it's probably using my citadel upgrade for most players you might not get 30. You're probably going to get 20 as an internal storage. That means they're going to make trips to the warehouse more frequently. So that's another factor in, in here is that whenever I tell you certain numbers, don't rely on the numbers that I'm giving you. You have to play it by ear based on your upgrades, your situation, your map layout, and how you've got things done. So right now, oh my god. There you go. All right, cool. I'm going to want my warehouse nearby. So that way, these guys can deliver it faster. And that way, the only thing they have to worry about um, is going to the hearth. So here, yeah, this is slowly increasing. But yeah, I, I, I still happen to have the 30 out of 30, and this is an upgrade. So chances are, if you're doing the tutorial, you might see a 20 here, and you're gonna have to deliver it. You could also adjust this too, to decide to force them to deliver or not. A lot of times, the, there's a reason for doing this, because sometimes you need the food right away. And your your characters are start or your villagers are starving. Okay. So I could probably take that off. Because I'll probably need it for the grains. Okay. And then you're just making me forage or pickle goods. Nice. That's nice. next part of the tutorial. That gives me a plus two, right? Very nice. 
There's wine in an incapable building. Do I have a, the ability to make wine? Oh, the distillery should make wine, right? Yeah, the distillery should make wine. How many? 30? Oh, dear lord. Alright, luckily I have some of this. Oh wait, I actually have enough already. Well, I move that over there, so that way this guy can pull it. And so what he's gonna do is he's gonna pull this into this without having you to manually deliver this to the warehouse. And see, the farm alert, you can take these guys off now. Oh, he's here before the storm. Nice. This is nice to have. For the berries. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, that's 4, right? Alright, let's See, I'm not selling that because I don't know if that's required for anything. It may not be required. It may be required, it may not be required. Alright, I'm gonna rebuild that. Because now this is gonna be really useful for this mystery. It's kind of weird just not having a blight post and doing anything blight post-ish. If I take that, my hostility goes up. I don't need it right away. It's kind of funny. I might actually beat the tutorial before I get to anything significant. Because they have not taught me anything about hostility or... Or trading. Unless the second part of this tutorial, there's like a second map. Maybe there's a second map. But that doesn't make sense, though, because if you notice the the tutorial panel on the left, they had, like, four things, right? And the basic and the second one. The first and the second one were broken up. So this has to be the entire thing that talks about hostility and trading. Hey, Marcus. Welcome back. I did not cover all of it, right? Yeah, it's because the... So, that last run during the storm, I'm, I did not fully plow it all because it was a very short storm. So what I needed was having two workers to do the the plowing instead of one. And see how where I made the mistake of not having enough workers during the storm? Okay. Let's take a look at this. Oh, discovering a glade during the storm grants you 10 tools. Interesting. 
gain meat and grains. Huh. I, I just re-roll this. I'm just curious to see. Oh, rebellious spirit and calming of the forest. Wait. Calming of the forest. Tome denial is not empathy, right? I think that's corruption. And then what was the other one? Blight Rock Cauldron, I think, is an empathy, right? That's this one over here. Or no, Leaking Cauldron. Oh. I think Leaking Cauldron it was also empathy, right? Yeah, it is empathy. I mean, this is an easy win right here, too, but... Because I'm playing on this map, the Queen's never pissed. That's the thing. The Queen is never gonna be pissed. Oh yeah, I forgot. Which one do I want to be the thing? Beaver housing? Lizard housing. Okay, lizard housing then. I took off the porridge, right? Yeah, I did. Alright, I'm trying to get to the part where... The tutorial actually says stuff about trading. Oh, hey, it's 4, not 12. Oh, yeah, it's... Oh, because I'm playing on the easiest mode. That's why. It's like, when does it get hard? It's not getting hard. Okay. Wait, why did somebody die? Oh, oh, because of this. Right, 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 right. Right, because of the ancient path. Right. Somebody died. Correct. Okay. And that raised the hostility level up to 110, right? But gets decreased for each trade routes. But I have no trade routes, even though I have unlocked it already. And this this map is supposed to be about trading. So I'm still kind of figuring out where the trading part of this mission is. All right, you see how I get an alert here. And by putting in three workers, I've managed now to fill 12 out of 12. So I can actually take this off now. And I finished that before the storm. So this is an example of, you're probably making wine to turn into trade goods. Maybe, we'll find out. Uh -huh. I forgot to actually harvest that during the season. See, we're getting the four from this right here. See, now we're only getting one, so let me take that off. I'm gonna move this over here. Let's empty that out. Go ahead and make, make that. Carpenter. Yep. All right. I'll take it. <clears throat> I 
Oh, yeah, okay. They are probably gonna try to get us to do that. I see where where this is going. Okay, not yet anyways. Sacrifice wood in the ancient hearth. Interesting. It's probably trying to teach us right now to lower the hostility. Okay, this part I can understand. Where that is teaching us how to lower the hostility. What they should be doing is getting us to trade only with the one trader that we can't attack, because what happens when I attack this guy, you know what I mean? And then it it short circuits the tutorial. Most players wouldn't wouldn't get to that point because I actually have an, a large version of the of the uh, the extended range of the the herb garden. I think most players will probably end up having to go right here, right, to be able to get that reach. Um, sure, I'll just do that for you guys. If you don't have the extended range. I have the extended range. That's why I have a bigger coverage. Um. Wait, what do I not? Oh. Oh, I didn't get the oh, I didn't get the essence though. They didn't give me an essence, huh? To start with. Interesting. I have to earn it. So that's probably why they're giving us the essence. That's another way to help lower hostility, right? Okay, so here. Sell pack of luxury goods to any trader obtained by the carpenter, and then buy at least three perks or blueprints from the trader. Okay. And that actually counted. This is retro. It counted what I've already done. Very interesting. I could buy that just to move my game along, but I'm probably winning too fast right now. No. Sure. I need to stop winning. So I can see the rest of this mission here. Why? How many do I need to sell 15, right? Alright, you can leave. over here. Alright, and then you. Move this over here. Okay. Oh, I forgot to harvest my thing. <laughs> I totally forgot to harvest. There was a harvest over here that I totally missed.
And because the storm is very short, you're probably going to need extra workers to plow this. And then once they finish plowing it, if they finish sooner, you can you can take them off. Yeah, see this side didn't get plowed fast enough. So we started late. Yep, didn't fully plow. Alright, how much of this have we done? Let's call the trader over, because we can. And let's sell all of this. Oh, man, he's not... Oh, wait, wait, it's probably because we didn't deliver it. Because we need a deliverance. Now we can, right? Yep, alright, so now we can get rid of all this. Let's take the money. Okay. I guess I'll buy that, right? Nothing else to buy, right? Oh, look at that. We already got a loyalty earlier, right? It's like, the, oh, these are not bad. I mean, they're all not bad, right? I'll take this. Extra food per minute's not bad. And then this guy here. Alright, so what I've been forgetting to do is actually building a park for the resolves. Yeah. Alright, let's continue with this tutorial and see what happens. Deliver 40. Well, it's a good thing I have this guy here. And it's seven, right? Okay. Uh, sure. All right, so guild house. So nothing here talks about trade routes. It's just trading, but no trade routes. Interesting. Probably gonna get get a guild house, right? Yeah. I'll take this one. Alright, so no, this whole entire tutorial does not talk about trade routes. Very interesting, huh? This is empathy. Shit. Oh my god, we got to make like, more containers. Uh -huh. 40? Or is it 30? 40? 30. 10! Oh, I only need 10. Alright, so somebody died because of the ancient pack. That's fine. Ron says, interesting. Ron, side eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> interesting, right? Interesting. It's not bad, the left. 
but this would be the empathy. Because this here says empathy, and we have empathy, so... That will certainly help us. We have all the time in the world. Alright, well, usually with this, I need four. Because they're gathering. It doesn't say the. It doesn't say four, uh, nine. But they actually gather nine. The nine actually comes from this. See how they're gathering nine? And then it actually has a chance to be 18, which is already. It's hidden. Because that 18. Uh, could all, yeah, see? See how she got 18? Because that 18 was already predetermined at the start of that drizzle spin when they were planting it. So that's an example of why you might want four workers, because she's going to take a long time to haul that back. One harvest is like half the storage? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. More than half, right? More than half. So that's an example where you want to think about planning ahead, because even though this says six during your harvest, you're like, well, you're not going to get six. You might actually get 18. Uh, and that's half the storage, so that means they're going to spend a lot of time delivering and emptying out their storage. If this entire thing was filled with berries, for example, you're definitely going to want four workers. In this case, I happen to mix it with some herbs. But, as I said, if you did this whole entire thing with berries and you got this perk, you're technically seeing a hidden nine, and then with a chance to produce double yield, that's 18. So it could be possible that more than half of these, this farm patch right here, uh, is 18 per harvest. And so having extra workers there is gonna make a huge difference because you're not gonna fill out, you're not gonna harvest all of this and transport it all back in time. So when they're done, you can just take them off, right? And then you save yourself time. So even if you're off, even if you have, if you're wrong and having four player or four workers in there, they might finish faster, and you can just take them off and let them do something else. Now we do, we did learn last from the last few cycles that you need two workers to fully get that to twelve. In the case of this over here, this is like fourteen, right? You might want three because we did two, and it didn't actually fully plow everything. But we also started late. Alright, so nowhere during this tutorial did it talk about trade routes. I thought that was interesting. It didn't talk about, like, needing to make provisions for your trade routes. Right? How trade routes work. Because I think the trade route screen really could use the tutorial a walkthrough because most people don't know the uh the cost of the because I, I okay so here's the thing right i played this like over a year ago before they introduced the trading system that they have now requiring you to have provisions to do trades back in the days when they had trading it was actually a a world map within the game so when you clicked on like the trade button it pulled up like the world map in the game in a hex grid top down view and it shows your relative distance to the other towns and then you would click on these other towns and it would show you a two directional trade what they want so they'll give you like a, a bar choices of hey here's the things i want you pick an item that that they're willing to sell you and you choose like any items that you you have and every single item had like a set of things that they want and the two-way trade would would then be set up and then you can actually automate it where it's continuous right and then you just collect the money all right so when i came back from from 
a year and a half later playing this game with the November launch in um, in Steam Steam early access, the trade system completely got overhauled and it changed. Two-way trades gone. There's no built-in map, and I was confused about the whole needing provisions thing. I'm like, what is this provision cost thing, right? I was fumbling around the trading screen going, oh, how do I use this trading screen? Now, this is a perspective from a player who knows how to play the game, who's actually played the game before, and then being introduced this this trading route interface. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And over the course of my time playing the game this past year, uh, players saw me jiggle the numbers, right? There's like a, a number next to it that goes one to five, right? Players didn't even know that they, they could do multiple quantity trades and what the you know what that means uh re in relationship to the provisions right okay so you can increase the numbers that means the cost of the provisions also increase players saw that like oh my god i didn't know that you can actually increase that number so that's something that that is overlooked and if they're going to do a tutorial i think the most important thing of the whole trading mechanics is not the trade with that trader selling that PAX thing I, I that's probably something that most people people can figure out but the trade route I think is more important and they need to add a tutorial for that uh, if they really want to you know do tutorials for trading so anyways this is just my feedback from playing this game and I'll probably talk to the developers about it afterwards or post a feedback into the discord and I think a lot of new players or players in general aren't giving their feedback to the developers on the uh, the content that got updated recently and i'm sure these feedbacks will will help them a little bit more anyways that's just my little assessment of whatever the hell's going on right um we're probably gonna win without completing this i don't I guess I'll do this one to see. One, two, three, ten, right? It's ten total. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if there's anything after this. Because it is technically possible for players to do this without resolve wins. It may just end. I don't know. Or, I mean, it may just stop here and not have anything afterwards. Because I'm trying to figure out, like, where the tutorial actually is about trading or hostility. It didn't even talk about building the second hearth to lower hostility. It didn't talk about any of that, right? I mean, it did, it did give us essence so i was waiting for the part where it says hey you know you get essence so use the essence to lower your hostility i mean i guess most players should already know how how that works by now right okay jenna that's a not a bad deal there I didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't get it. Okay, that usually does not happen. Usually I can I don't I can't call them right back. Interesting. Safe haven. Okay, so these here are not bad, right? Lower hostility. Like, I, I think that what they should have done was have a quest. Like, right here, the quest should be... Uh, the quest should be here uh, related to build a second ha a hearth. Right? Or have two district of... Or two encampments or something, right? As as a uh, as a quest to at least get players to understand. Hey, I built a second hearth. My hostility dropped. I think that should be one of the rewards. I don't. 
I don't understand why this should be a thing. They need to probably get rid of... Well, actually, that I, that I can understand because it's at least teaching people, hey, you need the beaver resolve up to to advance this bar here because 10 wouldn't wouldn't get that further. But I think that number should be raised to 30 instead of 25, right, as a, as a quest. So this here, I think, if I were to change this tutorial, this should be at least be 30 to get people to understand, hey, I need to win on resolve to get the last leg. And then somewhere along here, the quest should be somewhere, uh, somewhere associated to building a second hearth, right, after getting this here. And that way they can't they ha they can't build a second hearth without this of course right and then that part of the tutorial will at least get players to understand hey i can lower my hostility if i build a second hearth and then get this up to level two to increase my resolve so those are the things i would change to improve the tutorial to get people to actually understand the mechanics that they're trying to achieve here And then, what's the worst case scenario here on attacking this guy? I don't know, I think attacking the guy is a good idea, but one, two, three, four, five. He's three points. Yeah, probably not a good idea. Uh, what's this missing? Planks. Are you selling planks? Hello. You are selling planks. All right, so it doesn't say anything about the tablets, then. Yeah, it didn't say anything about selling the tablets. I was waiting for something related to the tablets. You can leave. Alright, what else are you offering here? Ooh. Beaver support, huh? Okay. Okay. There you go. Point five? I just need a point five. Probably do the beaver. Luxury needs fulfilled? Oh. Uh. Okay. That should give the beavers their happiness bonus. Or everybody their bonus, right? Did we sell enough? We did at least something. Hang on. 75? Hmm. 75. Wow, we're selling more than 75 here. See, so 25? More than that, more than that. Okay, let's, let's try that. Now that now should give me this up, right? There you go. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm waiting for the part where it tells me to do something, but it's not. Beaver resolve. Well, that's gonna finish the the mission. I'm at zero. I'm still like, okay, so I'm minus forty eight. That's less than zero. I guess the minute it can never go below zero. Beaver. 
Yeah, I can never go below zero. All right, I'm curious what else is on this map that they've unlocked here. There was a whole lot of glades here that's really dangerous, right? They only gave us shipwreck merchant. And the funny thing about ship... Okay, so here's the weird thing is they gave us shipwreck merchant. And then the quest is if you do trade routes, you can lower the hostility. But we can't do trade routes. So why would they give me the shipwreck merchant event if I can't do anything with trade routes? Right? The choices, the, the things that they... Yeah, I, I just don't understand the reasoning for offering a shipwreck trade route when uh, we can't do trades. Like, this is locked. I've already unlocked trade routes. But yeah, it feels very unfinished for a tutorial. Like, maybe they just like, hey, we checked it off. We did, we gave you more tutorial missions, but this does not, it doesn't feel like it's, it, it uh, connects. Right? Why offer Shipwreck Merchant as a right solve that has a text that says, hey, trade routes will lower the hostility, but we can't do trade routes. So that part is, I'm a little confused. All right. Do we go back to the screen or do we, do we continue? Yeah, see that? Just, it really baffles me, right? Teaching you trades. They, they left out the trade route part. And the hostility, I really don't feel like I learned anything about hostility other than it just gave us a blurp at the beginning of the tutorial, which really didn't tell me a whole lot either. I actually gave you more information than the tutorial itself. All right, well, that's okay. That is the hostility and trade mission. Let's learn about... You will begin a tutorial scenario, Rainpunk and Blight Rot. You can learn to leave the tutorial and return to the world at any time. Okay, sure. Let's go do that. So, all right. I, I'm i going to have to give my feedback on that tutorial here. I don't know if anyone else has done it or gave feedback, but I really feel like that last tutorial left out a lot of key things. Trade routes and hostility. Press any key to start, sure. Rainpunk is a technology that harnesses the power of charged rainwater to enhance industrial buildings. Okay, let's try to install Rainpunk engines in this tool shop. Press the button to connect pipes. Okay, so we they gave us five. We're going to install four. Each piped building is equipped with two engines, a primary one to improve production and a secondary one to improve working conditions. Okay. However, using rain engine or using rain punk comes at a price. The consumption of rainwater leads to the growth of a parasite known as blight rot. Okay. During drizzle and clearance, cysts retreat into their protective shells and pose no threat. Okay. However, during the storm, Blight Rot will attempt to corrupt your hearth and devour your villagers. Fair enough. Build a metallurgical complex in this region and repel the Blight Rot. What? What? <laughs> what? I I'm I'm like what? <laughs> you mean a blight host? What the fuck is this? Like <laughs> in this region to repel the <laughs> I'm baffled by this. Build a blight host, right? Build a blight host. I think that's what you're trying to tell me. What the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? What? 
Really? I can repel blight by making a mine? What? Are you kidding me? You're laughing so hard. Yeah, I'm I'm really confused. This is a tutorial about blight rot. And rain engine. Wait, what? What? Am I missing something, guys? Oh my god, you're giving me a workshop. This is the worst building ever, and you're teaching people to get a workshop. You can do the same thing with a crude workstation. Why a workshop? Okay, okay, this blows my mind. What? It said build it a mine, basically, to repel to repel the blight. All right, I'm going to go along with this, but I'm I'm confused. Anyone learning about blight rot will probably be also confused and realize, oh my god, I need to make a mind if I want to fight blight rot. That's the worst thing to teach people, but okay, fine. They really should not be teaching people that or get it relying on coal as a source of fuel for the blight post. And and look, the blight post is not even here as a thing here, right? No, they want me to to build a mine. Oh wait, there, I can't even get coal from this building. Why would I build a mine? I'm trying to understand why the copper bar is is used for this. Like I, I was thinking, oh, okay, cool. I build a mine. I get, I get coal, right? And then yeah, I can I, I can see where it was leading me towards. Like oh yeah, you need coal as fuel for the blight fighters. But no, there's there's no there's no coal on this map. This is the weirdest tutorial ever. It it, it introduced me to this engine. Okay, I'm gonna go along with this, but I'm I'm a little confused. The ground is soft, soaked with rain's essence. Mine's pretty fifty percent more goods during drizzle. Okay. They could have just made they could have just made you pipe up a building with your starting pipes and build a blight post to make purging fire from wood. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Right, right. I. I'm trying to understand what the reasoning is for this. I feel like I'm the only person that actually plays these tutorials to give developers feedback. Perhaps it makes sense if you forget everything you know about the game? I really don't know. Like, why teach us about the blight? You know, the engine installing and, and the blight and talk about it and then just segue to something else. Like why, why build the engine, right? It made me do a mine as a quest. Improves copper, okay, I'm gonna go along with this, but this is confusing. A good tutorial shouldn't overwhelm the players with tangent tangents like this. Right. If you're teaching me about blight post and blight and how it corrupts the hearth, right? Because it said something like, hey, you know, it, it will it will overwhelm your base with corruption and try to kill your workers. What does the mind as a new as an experienced player? I'm confused, right? I'm trying to figure out where this tutorial's going because if you're if you're trying to teach players something's like as a even as a veteran player, I'm like, what is this, right? Okay, here's the other weird thing, right? This isn't a glade event. Why am I getting a Ruin reconstruction in the Glade event. 
I guess if this is abandoned settlement modifier, right? I would get this. And what tutorial or so what normal gameplay do I get a stormwater geyser in my base? Right? What what normal gameplay do you get a stormwater geyser in your main base? Again, I'm a little confused. And why wouldn't they teach me how to get rainwater with the rain, you know, with this? Why, why wouldn't they talk about the rain collector? They probably wanted you to use it, but didn't know what glade you would open. Oh, well. I mean, okay, so look, most tutorials, if I were to do a tutorial, I would actually have a highlighted glow around these things or basically block off all these glades and say, hey, open this glade now, right? And they could just put like a wall around this by having trees not be cuttable. And just say, hey, for the purpose of the tutorial, this tree, this glade cannot be opened or something like that, right? Um, anyways, I'm, I'm going to go along with this and figure out where this is leading me. But I definitely have a long list of feedbacks for this. Jesus. Alright, I'm going to go with this one. Hang on. There's no read on this map there, right? You know, I'm gonna go with the... this one here. And produce copper bars, sure. And I don't have food consumption control, so... I'm not gonna worry about that. I don't have a field kitchen, right? So I have nothing to produce. Oh, I do have a kiln. Well, let's go with a kiln. Okay, the kiln uses blue water. I can see why they gave us the kiln. I could also kind of maybe see why they gave us the the workshop. Maybe. Oh, maybe the kiln might not be a good idea right off the bat because then I, I'd have to... No, hang on. I, I, I know what the problem is. How this, well, it's not a problem, but it's more of a giving us the kiln, or sorry, the workshop. Um, I'm deciding where to place that. Because we have it, they, we do actually have enough to place the workshop down. In terms of resource, I, it's it requires six, right? Unless it's four. Oh, it's four. It's four. Yeah, all right. No, it's still, it's still three or four, right? Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. They gave us enough resources. We'll just do that. I would never take the workshop, by the way. Not a choice, but sure. All right, we don't have enough to pipe that, right? So they'll probably give me a smelter, probably, I'm guessing. Because it's the most logical sense is give a smelter to get bars, right? Alright, we're probably going to get a smelter. Okay, there you are. Right, see, that makes the most sense. Logically. Um... The reason I'm not looting that is because maybe there's a quest for it? Maybe I should loot it. 
Charles is looted. And if there is a quest for it, then that is kind of out of order. Yeah. Okay. So maybe they're teaching us how to make more bars. And then piping it ourselves. Right. Why, why would they... Why would they give me a tool shop and tell me to pipe this when it really doesn't do anything right now? It really doesn't do anything. Okay, well, it's fine, it's fine. We'll just go along with all of this. Mm-hmm. Cutters, mines, herbalists. All right, there you go. Rain collector, yeah, it's fine. All right, it's it's probably most likely going to teach me how to make more pipes. What do you mean the stag glow? What's the stag glow? Oh, yeah, yeah, stag low, basically, to block it off. I, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they really should just be able to say, hey, this section is blocked off, and say, hey, you're going to find, you know, water over here. Or at least give us a fox, right? Well, I guess that part of the tutorial, people, most people won't have foxes yet. Wait, what are the corruptions again? When a villager dies or leaves, two blight cis appears in the settlement? Okay. And then what is this? Minus two penalty of the resolve. And what's this one? Blight cis appears in the settlement. Multiply the number of years. Oh my god. Great way to teach us that. Okay, I need to make housing. Forgot to do that. Totally forgot about the housing. It's not a normal standard start here, giving me the orders right away in the mines. Yeah, let's go ahead and open this up. I don't care. Produce coal and produce copper bars. Jesus, my layout's not very good. Oh shit, I already moved it. Nice, it's got soil. Do we, we don't have a farm. Oh yeah, we don't have a farm. All right, it's fine. All right, I'm gonna put the smelter here. I don't know where I'm gonna put them on my blight post. Yeah, it's kind of weird. They have the mine like right there. Like that's not standard either. Having a mine right in the middle of your base, right? 
These are not standard conditions. Oh, baptism of fire, nice. I forgot to build the trade post. I'll just take some random people, I don't really care. Upgrade mines for more ores. I forgot to make the housing. Oh, this guy's not selling. Oh, he is selling stuff, huh? Um. Three. It says, wants me to produce the bars, right? Actually, no, it's cheaper to buy this and produce it. Um, make, well, that's fine. It's good. I actually need six. Well, that's fine too. I'll take it, whatever. Okay, let's make six of these. So I'm probably going ahead of schedule here. Mm-hmm. I really don't think they should just tell you to fight the blight rot, you need to make a mine. That's kind of misleading. Like, I don't ever need to make the mine to fight the blight rot. Why, why would you tell me that? of it you're a scarlet orchard which has copper in the trees yeah i mean there's coppers in the trees too you're right you probably don't need the mine per se it's just weird how this is presented or laid out Let's move on. Produce pipes in any capable buildings. Okay. How many? Twelve? Who wants me to do twelve? What do I want to do with this? Nothing, right? It's so weird how that's there. Well, it's not telling me to salvage it yet, so I'll, well, it doesn't matter. I'll take it. Hey, Miss Panda Purple, good morning. Yeah, tutorial says it's for rain punk and blight rot. Mine would be for rain punk side since it's metal based. The main issue I have with this is the initial presentation where they start talking about blight rot. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. It's just that the dots don't connect. If you talk about blight rot and it says to fight the blight rot, you need to make pipes. Do you need to make pipes to fight blight rot? I mean, it says, I think, I'm pretty sure it says to combat Blight Rot. 
you need to make a med metal allergically complex complex right translation just be like hey you need a mine but that I don't think that's right It's just weird. All right, so now it wants me to build a geyser pump. Upgrade a building geyser pump. You can do this by selecting it and opening the upgrade tab in the panel. Okay. Thank you for the farm. Wait, a geyser pump is a blueprint? No. Most players will already have a geyser pump, but yeah, this is a little weird how they're like, oh, hey, here's a blueprint for the geyser pump. Give me a second, I'm gonna sneeze. All right, well, it's kind of weird also because they gave us a rain engine here, right? It's an unlock. But the geyser pump is normally a free unlock as well. Why would that be a blueprint? If you're going to gate things, I've already got this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, the or Okay, this is basically to lead you through the tutorials. That's fine. But, I mean, they also have that guy, that, that envoy, the crow. I mean, at the start of the game, he zoomed in on that and told you what to do. I mean, I don't see a reason why he does not come back and, and walk you through the other stuff, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, it's not a big deal. Like, I, maybe I'm okay with it. Thank you, bless me. At least, you know, on the bright side, at least from my point of view, it's good because then I can make tutorial videos. <laughs> so that way players go, oh, hey, I can go watch Ron's tutorial and actually learn how to fight light rot from his videos because this thing didn't really click. You know what I mean? good for me god this tutorial really threw me off because it takes me away from my standard build orders. Because normally I would have already done that by now. Set up the plus two and the... Alright, so now they want me to upgrade this. Okay, I don't... I don't almost... I almost never ever do this upgrade because I prefer having a slot for the foxes. And secondly, I wouldn't be able to deconstruct it and move it somewhere else if I wanted if I wanted to get the pipes back, right? Yeah, so you don't get the the essence back. There you go, plus one on the force of nature. What is this? Install at least three rain engines in production buildings. Okay. And blight post. Oh, see now they they're giving us a blight post. See, I, I it's confusing how they give it to you like this because you should already have it unlocked if you're doing the tutorial. It's just confusing how certain things are already unlocked, like the rain punk collector is already unlocked, right? 
you could have achieved the same thing. actually this is actually really good because on this map the percentage of of materials to get fabric is very low uh, let me see a roll over this to show you it's five percent to get it Field kitchen. Uh, wow, we have twenty four people already. Holy shit. Well, at least it gave us an oven, right? So we can actually do biscuits or pies, right? We can do pies. I'm hardly generating anything here. For the blight. Yeah, it's almost nothing. I'll probably just switch that to 12. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I could probably make biscuits off of the- or pies off of this. Alright, let's complete the tutorial, or the, the quest. Alright, so use 100 units of storm water, and then burn three. Oh, that makes biscuits too. Nice. Okay. I need to make more of the pipes. Okay. Yeah, this is fine. I forgot to turn those off. So we're at 14 again, you know. I have 27 people? Holy shit. This is insane. 
Can I build a dig office? I can't build a dig office. I wonder if there are dig offices in this game. Or this map. I'm curious. Clearance water. people here. Uh-huh. Doing. It's gonna be forever till I blur burn two, right? <laughs> They probably should have just said burn one. Yeah, I don't know about burning three, because the rate that they're giving it to us is really slow. It's like 32 usage to actually get one. Open this. Curious to see what's there. Ooh, oh my god. Oh my god. It, I, don't, I don't need the money. Okay, that's empathy. I'll take the empathy. Oh, nice. More soil. It's right next to our thing, too. Oh, no money. Why? Oh, no money. Well, never mind. I have money on the well. I mean, typically this map. Typically this map, ancient tablets, actually really good. Oh my God, she's got good stuff here. get rid of all my workers. Shouldn't give me what I need. <laughs> all the stuff I wanted. I just had too many workers. Way too many workers. They just kept giving it to me in, in rewards. Like workers, 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 right? Yeah. Clan hall? I guess they want me to have a clan hall? Confused why I need a clan hall? This map is about blight rot, right? Rain punk and blight rot. Okay, I should be able to burn two now. I wanted the pie for the oven thingy for free. Didn't get that. 
Alright, so hostility is reduced by 40, right? I forgot to limit that. our worker counts. here. Actually, no. I could probably build lizard homes. Lizard homes, right? Oh, they didn't give us lizard homes! Oh my god. Kind of weird how certain upgrades apply, and then other upgrades do not apply. Right? Like, my farm range extension on the Citadel upgrade applied to this, but I don't get, like, a a shelter home. I don't get like a kitchen. Right. So it's kind of weird how certain things get applied and certain things don't. And this is settler's mode, right? No, this is actually... I think this is pioneer... Or sorry, this is veteran's mode, right? Multiply... Okay, so 1.5 is pioneer. Two is veteran. So we're playing on veteran's difficulty. You probably get it even if you didn't have it in the Citadel. Oh, you think? No, that's not true though. Because when I did the tutorial, one and two, basic tutorial, it did not have the range extension built in. Right, as a new, so when I did my profile reset, I pointed out during the tutorial that I didn't get the range extension. I lost an awesome game due to a damn tree increasing corruption too much. Damn random events screwing a fucking a game. Hey, is the giveaway this Friday? No, the giveaway is not this Friday. It's gonna be... I'm gonna do a Black Friday giveaway, which is next, next Friday. I'll probably do two or three giveaways, maybe even three giveaways. I actually have Starship, Starship Troopers two keys to add to the list that you guys can choose from. I'm working on maybe trying to get the um, the extra keys for my time at Sandrock. Because it requires me to make like a TikTok video. Not a big fan of making TikTok videos, to be honest, but... But yeah, um, TikTok videos. So that will get me a sand rock thingy. I was uh, 10,000, 1,000% uh, just now, and the issue was that I had no fuel to make the damn burn burners. 10 slash 26. Oh, yeah. Sorry, here. All right, we got it. Oh, wow. They just unlocked all three for us at the end, huh? That was fast. What is this? I've never seen this. Complete a Forbidden Glade event. Oh, this icon is new, right? Complete any Forbidden Glade event. 
A place where villagers can fulfill their need. Clan hall. Just build one, right? They gave us one. Open or send three abandoned cash to the Citadel. Okay. That's interesting, huh? Eight of those. And the cash, right? I have a problem. Help me that. Okay. It's not like you can get these things when you need them, right? What do you mean? Oh, you're talking to Brian. Uh, Brian says... Uh, Barkeeper's armor is your friend if you're in trouble. Uh, with the blight rot, yeah, that's what I ended up getting. Fire armor's keeper, and then I think uh, Ara Araba Babat Matt Araba Matt says it's not like you can get these things when you need them, right? Yeah, Bert to Chris is amazing for that. Makes blight feel po positive. Uh, I had it still. Lack of fuel was was the GG. Hmm. None of this really matters. I'll take the left, I guess. Oh, I forgot to take this off. I forgot to take these guys off. Can I win without doing the rest of this stuff? Hmm, I can probably win without it. Forbidden? Where is the Forbidden? I'll probably win before even reaching the Forbidden, right? Yeah, I think I'll win before even reaching the Forbidden. You know what? Screw it. Let's see, the clan hall? Yeah, easy peasy. Forbidden. I don't know. Kind of dangerous to go in there. I just meant Baptism of Fire and Burnt to Chris, to be honest. The rest are fluffy. Yeah, Baptism of Fire is really nice. Lower hostilities. that over here. Okay. Are you opening it up? Are you opening it up? Clan hall, right? Lighthouse? Ooh, Lighthouse is kind of cool. Oh, that doesn't give me a resolve, does it? It does not give me a resolve. Okay. 
I don't think that does anything major. What's the solve time? Two minutes? Ugh, we can cancel that. Let's not. <laughs> oh, wait, it requires... Comp comp no. We can wait on that, too. No papas today. I'll take it. I'll take it. I might not need it. Might not need that either. Nope, don't need that either. One point. Maybe. I'll just buy it. Five. Yeah, I'm not gonna squabble over that. Don't care. That's like two points. You have bricks? You do have bricks. Um, Alright, let's buy all of this. Oh, I have more than I need. I'm not gonna squabble that either. Don't care. Hmm. Yeah, I'll attack you. Don't care. I'll take the right. Okay, Firekeeper, Brick Oven. So I got one, right? And then two. Yeah, we win now, right? Easy. Because I get a chest and then we're done. We get the chest and then we're done. Yep, we're, we're done. What's the reward? Oh, it's nothing special. That would have been nice, though, we're here. It's kind of cool they have this new icon. Alright, well, that was the end of the tutorial on the Blight Rot stuff. Hmm. I think that could have been improved. It was kind of confusing at the start. Yep, that was kind of weird. Alright, so that is the end of the tutorial. I'll probably give my feedback to the developers on how that could have been improved. And now, I'm going to take a quick break. So, BRB.